Welcome to Bushy Park. Welcome to, to the car park. The, the Diana Memorial Fountain is over there. Um, and we're here on this particular little bit of tarmac with these um, yellow crisscrosses because, because Paul Sinton Hewitt, this is where the very, very first park run started. If I remember correctly, Vassos, they were stood here, and you can pretend to be standing there, and I was stood, actually I was stood here, and I had my stopwatch, and I did a little briefing. Uh, if you don't know the course, you're going to get lost, you just come back next week and do it again, but, and then it was on your marks, get set, go. We didn't have a formal briefing per se. Um, but it's very interesting. So we ran in that direction, sort of going left of the, the white bollards, and then we round the tree. And it was, it was brilliant. There were, there were 13 runners, myself, Joe, um, and then two other friends who were volunteers at the time. And they, uh, well, they, were, they were marshals, were they? Well, no. In fact, because of the low-key nature of, yeah. of the start, I didn't appoint any... We didn't have a concept of volunteers. We yeah. just had people who turned up to help and so nobody was appointed in any particular position I was going to do everything yeah but of course Joe I, I was very new in my relationship with Joe probably I don't know four or five months or so yeah. and um, I'd been discussing the whole thing with her but I hadn't really said to her this is what I'd like you to do and yeah. so I had it sorted in fact my car was parked where that black car is where the tree is falling down yeah and the back of the car, the boot was open, and I had uh, a clipboard there where when you finished, you had to go back to my car, hand in the token, yeah. and write your name down with, with the number of the token on it. So there's a photograph, isn't there? There's a photograph of, is it the 4th of October? Th that's that 2004. one there. This is the 16th birthday, yeah. which is why we're back here. Yeah. should have said that. Yeah. Um, so that photo is over there. Where we started, mm -hmm. that's the photo. And if you look, Before you can still see the crisscross. Before. Before. Before the start. So just before your briefing, yeah. you were like, come on, let's do a photograph. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, in you fact, planned to do that at that stage because, uh, you know, we know the story. You were injured. You thought this is a good idea for, yeah. you know, to, yeah. to see my running mates. Yeah. Is it the, the stragglers that you were... The... I was a member of the stragglers, but in fact, I, the timer that I was holding yeah. was from the Ranelagh Running Club. So I was in transition. Yeah. I was going to move from the stragglers to the, to the Ranelagh. In fact, I had moved. But they were both yeah. close to my heart, you know, they're both good Because where would you normally, because the stragglers do a 7K, don't they, every, Which, every summer, and that... It's on that side somewhere. of the park. Yeah. It's one of the, one of the country's best running events. It's on oh, a Friday it's night. fantastic. Yeah, Friday and it's night. beers afterwards, yeah. 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 and it's just, I mean, 7K for yeah. a start, you know. It's weird, you run up to this fountain, and then you make yeah. a left turn, and you run down the avenue, and then you go back, and so it's sort of on cross country. But you'd, you'd obviously mapped out the route. You'd mapped it out as yeah. a 5K. Yeah. So you, you decided to start there because yeah. why not? Yeah. And they said, well, let's, let's do the route. But how did, you, um, how did you decide on this route? So in, in those days, uh, Garmin, uh, GPS, well, they, were, they weren't accurate. Yeah. They're still not accurate. Yeah, they're but really not. So <laughs> I, had a, I had a trundle wheel. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you a secret now. But I had a trundle wheel, and I come in, I measured this course out. Yeah. And uh, I thought I had it exact on 5K, but it turns out for yeah. about a year, it was 80 <laughs> meters short. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of PBs. <laughs> well, count. PBs, no, they did count. They stayed. <laughs> the, the problem was that people had to, um, they, they had to just get fitter to beat them. So, <laughs> so this is, so, so we're running on the grass. So, yes. So you kind so of. it was 11 runners. Was it 12 runners? 13. 13. 13. So to, to get the best out of the course, you come as close to this embankment as possible. They weren't allowed to go on the roads. That, yeah. that rule was there right from the word go. And the, the idea is that you're going to keep everything, the park on your left the whole time. So you, you, you won't cross any roads. Yeah. But yeah, so we run up towards Hampton Court Palace and then we do a little bit of a, a dog leg and come back. So, uh, just because I mean, currently I think I've run Bushy once, maybe twice. The current route, if I'm wrong, the, the briefing is just behind where we are here, just behind these trees. It's over here. And then you start going in that direction. How, when did it show? Yeah, that's it, there. Straight on. So yeah. if, if we move the camera down just a little bit, you can see the avenue of trees heading straight down that way. And, and so it's this patch of grass where the runners uh, conglomerate at the start. And we fill that whole patch. 
Yeah, I know, it's amazing. It's amazing. I came for a birthday two, three years ago. Yeah. And it was, I mean, there were almost 2,000 people. I know. And, and, and camera crews from the BBC. That's and phenomenal. Sky and ITV, everyone was here. Yeah. So here we go. So we're, we're, we're running around this magnificent fountain. It, it, every time I come into Bushy Park, this just, I just, it just, it's so beautiful. It is lovely. And the fact that the road splits and goes around it in a one-way system. It's just a, it's a lovely, it's a lovely part of London this anyway, but this yeah. is a particularly lovely part. And actually the rain is just about holding off. I don't want to speak too soon. So we're still, we're still running. We're still in the first half a kilometer, you know, I guess. In the summer, yeah. um, through the summer months, they hold a one mile time trial uh, down here. So you, it's, it's called the Ara Arathisia a time trial, a, a mile, the Arathisia yeah. mile. But it starts just down there. They run round here. You do two laps of this circle and then you go back and finish. It's a tremendous course. Um, one mile. One mile, one mile is mile hard. Is painful, painful yeah. distance. Yeah, it is. It's um, tough. So here we go. So you thought, well, let's keep the park to your left. So, I so then you head straight for these trees and we go all the way down to just about the exit. Then we do a, a U-turn and come back past the um, playground. So I, I know you've talked about this a lot before, Paul, that, that first race, the first time where you set it up. But honestly, you've gone to the, you've gone to the trouble of, of getting tokens. You know, you had a stopwatch, you had a clipboard in the back of your car. I mean, all of this is, is quite a lot of admin for something that, that would only happen once. So you must have had in the back of your I mind, know. Well, this is going to be a Saturday, no, no, a that, Saturday routine for us. Yeah. So, it was definitely something I was going to do forever. Oh, really? Already? Yeah. Oh, yeah. From, from the, the word go, it was something I was going to do forever. But I don't really, you know, you, you set the stall out. Yeah. Um, this is something that's going to happen every single Saturday, come rain or shine, no matter what, it's going to be every Saturday. But I hadn't thought what the complete, you know, what, yeah. what is that going to mean for me as a person? Does that mean I can't go on holiday? And for the first three years, I didn't. You were there. I didn't, yeah. On that little patch of tarmac with, yeah. the, with the yellow crisscrosses. Yeah. With your stopwatch. Yeah. And your tokens. That's for, extraordinary. For so the what, first... Because what, 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 that, sorry, that's put the whole thing in a different context for me. And I know you quite well. I had no idea about this. You oh, yeah. knew this was, a, this was a forever thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it wasn't just something to do for the next few weeks until you got over your injury. Oh, no. This is an event that you wanted to put on for the benefit of your fellow runners yep. um, here in Southwest London, but you were just gonna just be there for good, just so that they could time themselves over this. And why 5K? Well, there are lots of reasons. So let me, let me go back to that. Yeah. So, so when I started this, I was very conscious of the fact that I was doing something that was kind of outside of the club environment. Yeah. But I was very, passionate about the club environment. Mm. So I wanted to do something that didn't exist in club world, yeah. but that would be, an, you know, it would enhance athletes' life, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so I chose Saturday because generally the races are not on a Saturday. Yes. I chose uh, eight o'clock in, in the morning, because, or nine o'clock in the morning, because I wanted to be out of everybody's way. I didn't want to in, impact other park users. And then I chose 5K because it's something you can do pretty much in half an hour. Yeah. You know, you, we can get in and out of the park in 45 minutes, mm. generally. These days, maybe 50 minutes or, two, or an hour. But, um, I, I, you know, I, when I was setting it up, I'd, I was cognizant of the fact that this was going to be a, a commitment that I'd have to make every single week. And, and I was happy for that. I mean, that very, very first Christmas happened to be on a Saturday. 2004, Christmas was on a Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> and I was here, slightly drunk. Yep. But I was here Christmas morning. Well, you started early or still from, or from the... No, this is from, this is from Christmas Eve. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Please to hear it. Yeah, Christmas Eve. <laughs> And in fact, because Christmas was on a Saturday, so was New Year's Day. And of course, yeah. yeah and yeah. so New Year's Day, I arrived. I was also, I think I was still in a tuxedo. <laughs> and uh, and where, I chose... Where had you been New Year's <laughs> Eve to wear a tuxedo? It was a club, a cl sort of a club. It was a bunch of friends, but basically it was a, a dressed up. Yeah. Yeah. Arrived here in my tuxedo and I chose to run it 
in oh. my tuxedo. <laughs> so how, um, how many did you turn up to before your injury cleared up and you could run as well? Well, my injury didn't clear for very, very long, many, many years. And um, I would say it's only really cleared in the last five years. Oh, really? Yeah. So what, what was the injury? Uh, there was a whole range of things going, but I, I basically I was running and I tripped and fell and I tore my Achilles, uh, sorry, I tore my, my hamstring and I yeah. tore my glutes. And so my glutes had stopped firing. I'm just going to pause both the story and Patrick walking backwards yeah. filming us. Have a look there, Patrick. It's an amazing stag doing kind of... Okay, this is a bad time for stags in the park yes, because it is. Um, yeah. they're very keen on their girls. They do. I mean, sometimes you come here <laughs> and Home Park, just across the road there, uh, and Richmond Park, obviously, and you see <coughs> them actually rutting. And oh, it's, yeah, yeah. And it's a primal yeah. force. It really is extraordinary. But, um, but if, so you, yes. if, if you get between them and their girls right now, it can be very dangerous. So no, it can. Yeah. It can. I mean, there, there, are, yeah. there are signs all over the park saying, yeah. you know, deer are wild animals. Yeah. Don't be silly, for goodness sake. And that's, that's, that's dead It's right. funny because for the rest of the year, they're so docile. Yeah. They're yeah. really quite something. Um, sorry, so you, you had torn your... Yeah, I did. I mean, the reason I started this... Bushy Park time trial was mm. because I thought that's it, my running's done, I'm yeah. finished, I'm never coming back. And uh, you know, I had an assessment um, from a top physio, and he basically said to me, It's going to take a very long time. And I was 44 at the time, and yeah. I thought, Okay, forget it. I, you know, any ambition that I have for any kind of running will come to an end. I was still able to run, but I would be in terrible pain afterwards. So, so I'd I'd go out and run a 19-minute park run, yeah. but then three weeks I wouldn't be able to do anything. So it took a while, um, and interestingly enough, cycling has been the big catalyst for fixing my glutes, and it, because of cycling I'm, I'm actually running yeah. pretty well now. You're a big cyclist, aren't you? You did 100k this morning, you were yeah. telling me? Yeah, I had, a, I had a brilliant ride this morning, so yeah. Because you, you live not far away from here. Where, no. where do you go for 100k? Oh, we went to the Surrey Hills. Oh, they're so lovely, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Box Hill? I did Box Hill. In fact, I did a PB at Box Hill today. So what's your... What's, <laughs> I'm such a nerd. What's your, what's your Box Hill... Uh, bottom of Zigzag Hill up to, what, the Smith & Western? Is that, is that the thing? So I, I, in fact, I went much further. I, so I rode the whole of Box Hill all the way to, I think it's the second... There's a little post box, and I did the whole thing. So today I did Box Hill in just over seven minutes, which I think is a thing to go under seven minutes. Is it? Yeah, I think it's, it's like a Richmond thing. Park three times in an hour. Something and like park that. Run under whatever you want to make it yeah. under. Yeah. 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 Oh well, congratulations. <laughs> I just loved it. I mean, so I was in France for a couple of weeks cycling, yeah. and I think I, then I had to isolate. So pretty much nothing. Mm. Uh, and I didn't know how today would go, and it just was brilliant. It's, just it's one of those wonderful days, really. Well, and also, if it is a thing, you know, if you're going to add age grading into your cycling, because you've just yeah. had a, a, you know, a big birthday, so yeah. suddenly, you know, suddenly don't, don't take Paul on anyone <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on, a, on a bike. So here we are. So past, it was the playground here? This is the playground. So what's interesting about the playground is there's a little wooden horse somewhere here we'll walk past it but that is the 1k mark so we we never we never put barriers or, or markers in the yeah. park but everybody knew that when they came around this corner oh they're the, they're the horses so i think they've been moved they they're there now but they used to be just over here yeah and this would be the the first kil kilometer done and now we've got this long straight road um for the next kilometer how long did the course um, stay like this? Oh, uh, it's a good course. Yeah, it, it is a good course. It's a single lapper. Um, yeah. In fact, I like I like the current course. Yeah. I think that it's an interesting course. It stayed quite a while. Uh, you know, I've already told you that that first course was short. Mm. <laughs> so uh, I can't remember the circumstances, but we then measured it a second time, yeah. and found that it was short again. So even though we had taken 80 meters and added the 80 meters, a second time it was measured. 
And then we got a, an official course measured to come and measure it. What do they, I've always wondered, because they're obviously brilliant at their job, but yeah. what can they do that are, that are, you know, don't they just have a... a... No, they don't. So, what, so it was Hugh Jones. Hugh Jones yeah. is one of the world's top course measurers, mm -hmm. he, and he's a member of my club. Okay. <laughs> so he came down. He's, he's always been... It's not uh, what you know. He's been you very know. generous. Yeah. He's always very generous. Anyway, what they do is they use a bicycle. Yeah. They measure the circumference of the wheel. They pump it to a certain temperature, a certain yeah. pressure. They then, uh, every single time, they will then calibrate the, the, the bicycle. So they'll, I don't know, do a kilometer or whatever, but exact yeah. kilometer, and get it to within a millimeter of that and then they'll mark the course. They'll, they'll ride, they don't even ride, they walk with the bike all the way around the course. And uh, he found it was short yet again. <laughs> so now we know this is 5K. Yeah. That's exactly 5K. So, yeah, so this is the original course, but added, you know, with the added yeah. 80 meters that, that yeah. we left out. So we just yeah. passed the, the 1K mark. You're on, I don't know if you can see on the, on the film, Patrick, but obviously this is, this is tarmac, this is a, you know, lovely, fast, kind of running route it's it's pancake flat which, it is, is. which is absolutely perfect i mean the whole of bushy park is, is basically flat yeah. um and um how well did you know kind of this this bit of the park how well did you know this route as, a, as a, was it on your kind of running radar when you just used to go out and run no not at all in fact uh, if you asked me prior to park run whether i was uh, prepared to get up and go for a 5k run i would yeah. say absolutely not so it's too short a distance. Yeah, I would, yeah, yeah, ne I would yeah. never do it. Um, I knew the park, but I, I'd done complete laps of this park. So it's about yeah. s just short of seven miles all the mm. way, 6.7. So I knew that. I'd also knew Richmond Park. And in fact, in my pre-park run setup, I had originally made the decision to go to Richmond. And then I changed that decision mm because I realized it would take me five seconds to get here from my house. Yep. And because I was going to be doing it every single week, mm. that would be a big deal. So it was essentially, I mean, you, you always say it's because you were injured, but this, was, this wasn't just a, 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 which I'd assumed it was a fill-in for while you no. were injured. This was a, a new thing. So Paul yeah. went from being uh, somebody who was a, a, a very talented and, and quite a serious and definitely keen amateur runner to Paul, who's a... A kind of a race organiser, for the good of yeah. others, but a race organiser. Yeah, I, I think in the early days, I wanted to give something back. Mm. As a club runner, I'd always benefited from other people standing up, marking yeah. courses, setting up runs and so on. And I hadn't really done much volunteering myself. And I felt that this was my way of giving back. And I, I knew that I was... Um, I was adding an, uh, an exciting element to the runner's scene, but I had no idea it would become what it's become. How, no. how did you know that people would, would turn up the first week and would yeah. keep turning up? So the, the first thing I did was I produced a leaflet, um, an A4 leaflet. I went to speak to the Stragglers Running Club and I went yeah. to speak to the Ranella Running Club and I sent the leaflet and they put it up on the board. And it turned out 13 runners pitched up. I think four of them were stragglers, four of them were ranlers, and the remaining were people who had heard or were related to one of those four. What was the lead up time? Oh, it was three months. Oh, okay. Three months. So from, so I knew that this is something, I think I've known for a long time that this is something I wanted to do, but it was always on the back burner because I was running. Yeah. When I got injured, I said, OK, I need to do this. And I gave myself three months to get it started. And get a little bit of a, yeah. a buzz going about it. There were wasn't you, a buzz. Were, yeah, were you, <laughs> were you um, happy that 13 people turned up to run? Yeah. Or were you disappointed that only 13 people turned up to run? No. What, what were your feelings? No, I'd set my stall out, but it didn't matter who yeah. turned up at all. Uh, if it was one person, I would still offer the yeah. event. So it was never about the numbers. In fact, I downplayed the numbers. In fact, Park Run often downplays the numbers. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we, we, we did very little publicity. In fact, none at all. No publicity apart from that leaflet. Yeah. That was it. 
And then the word, it just got, people just talked about it. They talked to their friends. Uh, they, uh, uh, what was surprising about it was that the club runners thought it was a bit passe. It wasn't really their thing. Yeah. And, um, and of those first few, I suppose, years, it, it built up the momentum from the clubs very slowly, but the, their families mm. started to come a lot. So, so I remember quite often uh, a wife who had spent her whole life supporting her husband running, yeah. coming along and saying, this is for me. He's got to support me now. That's so cool. Yeah, so it turned, it turned on its head and we had a lot of family members. Because, because right from day one, you were allowed to run with your dog and you were allowed to push a, a buggy and it was for everyone. There were no rules. In fact, we, the rule of um, only after the age of four can you join the park, mm -hmm. that didn't exist. So it could be anyone. Anybody, yeah. yeah. Um, I left it up to the parents to make proper choices themselves. And you called it a time trial, which does yeah. have a sort of, it's a run, not a race feel about it. Was that, was that conscious? No, I think that was probably um, an error. A time trial, I said it was a time trial because it was you against yourself. Yeah. But in fact, time trial, especially if you're a cyclist, just is about racing. Yeah. So it was inferring exactly what I didn't want it to infer. Yeah. And people talked to me about that for quite a lot. Uh, I, I had um, a lot of people saying to me, time trial is the wrong word, time trial is the wrong word. And I kept saying, why would you change something that seems to be working? Yeah. And then I was, I think it was 2009, I started to work with Nike and Nike, the marketing machine. Yeah. They said to me, you know, this time trial thing, it's, it's a bit pants. <laughs> <laughs> and then I referred back to a discussion I'd had with a friend, Stuart Lodge, uh, a year ago. Yeah. When he had said to me exactly the same thing, mm. time trials a bit pants, why don't you call it park run? And of course, I. So it's I Stuart's just, idea completely. He just said, "What about park yeah, run?" Yeah, and that was it. We, he he walked into the distance, and I walked into the upper distance, but it lodged in the yeah. back of my mind. And uh, and then I was having this meeting with Nike, and I said, "Well, why don't we call it park run?" <laughs> yeah. And so hang on, because there's 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 the famously small P. Yeah. Um, no gap. Um, was that was that immediate? Was that Nike's idea? Was that Stuart's idea? So what Nike did, Nike had a relationship with us. They paid us a certain amount yeah. of money for branding rights and that sort of thing. And you know, just like our sponsors do this uh, currently. Yeah. But they loved what we were doing. They really fell in love with the the atmosphere, the ethos, the way we did things, and so on. And so they were part of the creative. When they said to us, "Why don't we rebrand?" I said, fine, we can do that, but I don't have any money to do that. Yeah. And they stumped up another, I think it was 10,000 pounds in 2009, and they used their own creative agency. And so I built a relationship with the creative agency, which yeah. went on for another five years at least. They came up with a whole redesign around the word park run, but also um, take into account the things like the, the environment, so you, you'll remember the, the little animals that we've got, and yeah. especially for the children. So that was their creative, and the lowercase p was something that they brought to the party, and I didn't think to question it. I thought, yep, that's just a brand. I, just, see, I like just, it. I hear you don't. No, I, I'm, I like it, but I don't like defending it. Okay. I, I'm tired of saying to people, in fact, I haven't be, said it for years, but yeah. I don't want to be able to say, uh, to have to say to people, this is how you spell park run. <laughs> yes, and, and you've stopped sort of gurning when you see it in, yeah. in the national press with a, with yeah. a capital P and a capital R. <laughs> well, that, that's the only time I really get annoyed is when they split the word. Yeah, okay. yeah so I don't care if they use a capital anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's... I remember in probably 2010 saying to myself, I'll know we've hit the big time yeah. when the word parkrun gets used in a normal context where people bring it into their daily life as if 
it mm. really has um, an additional meaning, like, for instance, Race for Life. Everyone knows what Race for Life yeah, is. Yeah, it's yeah. all about cancer and so on. And so I, I kept saying to myself, that's what I, what I hope for. I hope one day the Oxford Dictionary will include the word park run has it? to mean, I don't think it has, but to mean free weekly time run yeah. in a park with your friends. I think it can only be a matter of time. And, well, and, and a smaller, I think, I'd be surprised if it's not. No, you'd have heard it, about it if it was in the dictionary. I, you, you'd imagine I would have. But, um, I mean, it gets used in television programmes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it, the it, bill. It's common parlance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we had the... Uh, the health secretary on the on the Virgin Radio show last week, yeah. and um, and we mentioned Park Run. He goes, oh, "I love Park Run. Go with my kids." <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's. I think pe- people definitely know about it. It's crazy, um, isn't it? I feel we're missing a little bit. So we've gone from yeah. your your Bushy Park time trial in yeah. 2004, three month lead in the 13 runners, and it sort of grew slowly, word of mouth, and then I love the fact that, and you must have loved the fact that there were. It was the, you know, the. Um, the, the family of the runners who were saying, okay, okay, you do all your running and that's fine and you do your mountains, but they, this is for me and that's, that's great and that really is the, the seed of where Parkrun starts, of the Parkrun that we know now starts. How did you get from there to, you know, a meeting with Nike? Who, who called who? Uh, and then what, you know, what, 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 what happened in between 2004 five and 2009 where, when brands like Nike, for goodness sake, were, were knocking on the door. Well, to, to be fair, when we were in partnership with Nike, we were still very, very small. Mm-hmm. So, but, but Tom had come on board. No, uh, Tom was probably... Tom had, t- when we left Nike, Tom was on board, not okay. when we started. Just so, five years. Five years of, of not very much happening. Just your time trial was... Had Wimbledon? Yeah, Wimbledon, Wimbledon started. started on our third year, uh, 2007. Yeah. Uh, so my first partner was yeah. Lucas Ed. Okay. And one of the ladies who was uh, an employee of GSK came down and did park run. And afterwards, mm-hmm. she just said to me, Paul, this is fantastic. And how many people were there by this oh, time? Probably 30 or 40. Okay. So it was really, really early. But you always knew it was going to be free. Oh, And you always yeah. knew it, you wanted it to be inclusive, not yeah. just club runners. Yeah, yeah. And that's the, that's the language I used when I went to speak to, mm. to these um, sponsors. And lots of them must have thought I was bonkers. Because it wasn't a thing then, was it? No, no, it wasn't a thing. In fact, you know, I've had, we've had some incredible uh, sponsors over the years. We had GSK, yeah. we've had Adidas, we've had Nike. London Marathon mm. was one of the real turning points in, in, our, uh, in our growth. Because, obviously... They weren't looking for sponsorship. They don't sponsor anything, really. Yeah. But what they did was they understood what we were trying to do and they injected yeah. some cash. In. And in fact, they've injected cash into the parkrun world since about 2008 or nine. Yeah. And that's a consistent in investment in, in making people healthy and happier. Yeah. It's, well, not, it's not necessarily, they don't do it to drive people to the marathon. They dry, do it to make people get out and enjoy these open spaces, do a bit of running, find their way and so on. Oh, yeah, and that is amazing. To, yeah, you have to congratulate Hugh and his team. They definitely feel it in well, the right way, don't they? I, I, you get that, absolutely. But it was before that when I was speaking to David Bedford. Yeah. And I said to him, David here's my plan. This is what I want to do. He'd already invested in me for one year and I was there on the second year talking about I want to grow this. Yeah. And I think I was 40 events at the time and I put my plan on the table. I'm going to get to 80 events by this time next year. And he said to me, and I, I won't use the exact words that he used because... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he said to me, yes. Paul, you are nuts. Mm. And I said to him, David, no, if you don't understand what I'm going to do, that you just don't understand. How come you got it so quickly, though? Because you're in your you're in your mid forties when 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 you set it up. I'm I'm in my mid forties now. I just don't. It it takes that you. Every time I've heard you speak about it, you 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 give the impression that it just sort of happened, but that nothing like this just sort of happens. How come you understood so quickly that you were onto something quite so wonderful? Well, I think, I think it comes back to the fact that I didn't really care what other people thought. Yeah. I knew that this was good, that it was good for all the right reasons. 
that there was nothing inherently bad about it. I wasn't abusing yeah. anybody. I wasn't taking anybody for granted. Uh, everybody involved was getting something back for themselves. Yeah. Um, and I, I absolutely knew that if I went out and asked for something, that I would be asking for the right reasons. Yeah, you're not doing it for, for personal no. gain, you're no. doing it, and that's, I suppose, you know, oh, so we're turning yeah. left, are we? We're going this way. Okay. So you're at the 2K mark. Yep. Uh, t t actually, t yeah, I think t the, middle, the middle of that cricket field is the 2.5K mark, so we just come past the two. How, how are you doing, Patrick? Walking backwards? <laughs> <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna feel it in your legs. <laughs> we got some. Walking backwards is a thing, by yeah. the way. Apparently, it burns yeah. more calories. It's really good for you. Yeah. So, so you've got that going for you. Yeah. Um, when did you? When did this become your your main job? Well, not for a long time. So, uh, so we started in 2004. I think I gave up um, employment in 2010. And what were you doing? So I was a freelance uh, contractor with people like Vodafone and Three, mm -hmm. IT projects, um, managing change throughout organisations. So which, which, which means you had an understanding on how the, the IT, how the, like the, the, the nuts and bolts of yeah. the, the timing tokens and the, and, the, and the stopwatch would work. That yeah. came from your professional job. Yeah, we wrote that software. I wrote it to begin with. Did you? I wrote the whole yeah. software system. It's been rewritten uh, a few times since, but, but basically the first number of years, and you know, definitely up until 2010, I wrote the system that crunched the numbers and put the, the, the data up on the website. I produced the timing system. Yeah. I produced all of that. And, and um, we had some employees. Uh, the, the barcode system was a collaboration with uh, one of our employees who yeah. came together. So. So it was how much, good. How much time was it taking up? I suppose an increasing amount of your of your free time. Well, those first uh, first few years, I would go to work uh, for a full day, and then I'd work another maybe five hours every single day every on day. the system, just every on single this. day. And then the weekend would be taken up completely. I mean, I so if if you were, the way it worked, uh, if we had seven events. I would have to get them the names of all the runners on a Friday night. Okay. So there would be a process where we would cut off registration yeah. and then I would feed that data to them. They would have to ingest that data into their systems. And we're talking 2006, 7, 8, that sort of time. Yeah, yeah probably 7, 8, 9 and 10. Yeah. So then uh, they would arrive at the park on a Saturday morning. They would let their runners run, they'd time them, and then they'd have to process the day. They would, initially, they would send me, here's a list of everybody who ran and the mm. position they finished. Yep. Here's a list of every position and the time, and I would have to merge them, and I would have to fix all the problems. So if they dropped a token, or if they didn't get the time, so I would be doing that for every single event. I'd be at a desk on a Saturday, and I would work through it and I would publish results. And, it, and then I automated and I yeah. automated and I automated. Eventually we got to the point where perhaps there were 100 or 200 events and they were doing the, the, that merging themselves yeah. and they would just press a button and send us their data. But that data was then arriving in the cloud and I sat at a desk uh, that would process it, but I. I automated all of that, but I would still have to be there. That is a lot of dedication. I mean, this is, you know, people have ideas, but this is an idea that, that, that quickly grew into what we know now. Like, I think, I think yeah. people, what, what people think, and actually what I thought was that it quite quickly became yeah. very popular, and it sort of, like, and I know it doesn't run itself. I know how hard they work, mm -hmm. everyone at HQ. But you know what I mean. It has a sort of it has a it, it has a sort of self sufficiency about mm. it. But in the early days, it was basically all you and a lot of hours and all of your life. Yeah, I mean, you can't ever forget the the the, uh, the contributions of the volunteers mm. because even in those days, we didn't we didn't have uh, an official volunteer until about two thousand and eight. 
I can't remember when we started, but we didn't record them and we didn't... So was people... It, was it a website by this time? We did. No, we had a website from day one. PBs and um, yeah. best times and, and how I mean, many you've done? It, 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 from day one, we had a website. It was very, very static to yeah. begin with. I published the results and the results stayed, yeah. you know. And then there were people who helped me build it because I didn't have all those skills. I, a lot of these things I had to learn as I went along. Anyway... Um, I think the key, the key thing here is that when you're doing something you love, yeah. your passion, mm. it, it, you know, you think about running ultra marathons. Oh, no, I mean, I, I completely you, get the passion, yeah. um, but I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm blown away by the fact that, that, that this passion and carried you to, to hours after work doing yeah. this to grow something that you had absolutely no guarantee, no oh. inkling could become as, as big or as wonderful as it has been. Yeah. I think the first number of years, maybe even the first 10 years, mm -hmm. I was always waiting for it to fail. Mm -hmm. uh, always thinking, you know, something can happen that will just take this all away. Yeah. I, it only, I think only when I handed over to Tom and Nick yeah. did I realize that actually this is something that has permanence it's something yeah. that has legacy it's something that will live with me i will take it to my grave yeah well, you know <laughs> it would be what with a wonderful me. thing to take yeah. to your grave i know i know i know yeah. but it's not something that yeah. you plan no it's obviously it's, not something that you plan but what what i didn't know until just now is how much how much kind of blood effort. sweat and tears and effort and sheer kind of doggedness yeah. to do I mean, that's no fun, just processing everyone's <laughs> results. Some, some runner in Wimbledon that you've never heard of, I who was may a, or may not have got a PB but dropped their token. I was very good-tempered in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't so good-tempered at the end. So, uh, I mean, Joanne will tell you yeah. that uh, it nearly cost us our relationship. Mm. I would spend every hour that I had working on the system. And, you know, we were new in our relationship together. And at one point, and she's got two children, at one point she questioned why she was in a relationship with me because it was spent absolutely no time with me apart from when we were in the park yeah. running. Yeah. Yeah. Does she run? Yes, she's a runner. And I know, I know she's, she's a cyclist. Run, but did well. she run yep. in the early days as well? She had sort of just started running when I met her. She yeah. just started running for at Ranella Running Club. And so we, we didn't really meet at the running club. Yeah. Um, she was on a different path to the path that I was on. Speaking of different paths, which, which yeah. one are we going to? We're going to go to the right. So sort of little, little S yeah. shape. Yeah. By the way, if I had one running surface to run on for the rest of my life, I think it would be this. This sort this of... Slightly, slightly dusty path, just but through... But through beautiful scenery, be through this actually. This why is, this why is that appeal to you? I don't know. It just it just feels more like nature than I mean. I'd always go on the grass yeah, here, me too. as opposed to yeah. this concrete path. Yeah. But then actually, this I'm quite happy on. Well, that's my favourite surface. I'd rather Short run grass. Well, you know, if you've got a lifetime of running, then you yeah. know what it is to be injured, and yeah. and injuries come from any kind of. Well, a lot of it will come from a hard surface. So wherever I can, I'll yeah. move off onto the, um, onto the grass. And also, I think the older you get, the lazier you get. Yeah. And so the only injuries I've had in the last number of years is where I didn't pick my feet up mm. and I caught something and tripped and fell. Yeah, <laughs> tell so. me about it, yeah. <laughs> and you know you should be picking your feet up, yeah. but you sort of can't be bothered because <laughs> yeah. it means engaging those pesky glutes of yours. <laughs> No, I love this. I love this. This is a lovely... I mean, this is perfect for a 5K time trial. It is lovely. It? Um, this is... Am I right? This is part of the, the current route? No. No? We join it in oh, about a yeah. um, quarter of a kilometre. So how did you feel um, a couple of years in to the Bushy Park time trial and there were, I don't know, what, 40, 50 people turning up every Saturday morning yep. when somebody said, and who said, how did Wimbledon start? So Wimbledon started because I... I, uh, I brought three of my friends together yep. um, once a month in a pub yeah. and we would just talk about parkrun. Yeah. So it, it wasn't so much a 
what do we do and how do we do it yeah. it was more just a celebration so we'd we'd meet at the pub we'd have a couple of beers and then we would the, the conversation would go exactly the same way every single time yeah. duncan would say to me isn't it wonderful these people who just pitch up and then they run yeah. and then the numbers are getting bigger and bigger all the time and so there'd be that celebration and then jim jim desmond would say to me paul how the hell are you going to keep this going where are the volunteers going to come from mm. how can you afford this you can't afford this forever and he so he was the pessimist yeah you know um, so it was costing you money oh yeah yeah he was the pessimist, and I'd just say to him, Jim, don't worry about that. That's, you've got to have a long-term vision. We'll yeah. sort it out. Anyway, one day, Jim pitched up and put this piece of paper down on the yeah. table, and he said, there you are. That's your second one. He had gone to, Bush, to Wimbledon, and he yeah. had mapped out the course himself. He had he, he'd done everything. And it's a good came... course at Wimbledon. Has it always stayed the same? No, it's changed. Originally, we were on the other side of the horse track, and we, we used to run amongst the horses. And then they complained. Oh, that, and... that big um, open space yeah. the other side. Of so the, we would the cross. The I've got photos that yeah. I took of runners running when the horses are crossing. Right? <laughs> so the, the horse lobby uh, complained, and then I had to have a meeting with the rangers and... That didn't go too well. No, they're very, they're very strict, the Rangers at Wimbledon Common. Yeah, I mean, they don't yeah. take any, I mean, rightly, yeah. because they've got something wonderful that they want to protect. Yeah. Yes, it was an interesting time. And, you know, uh, again, I had the attitude, we're doing something really wonderful. There mm. cannot be anything wrong with it. So I went there all bullish, yeah. uh, ready to fight. But also um, because you know, and maybe that's the thing, maybe that's the backbone of this whole thing. You have always known you're doing something for the benefit of other people. It's not for yeah. your own benefit. Yeah. And therefore, that gives you that, that bullishness to say, well, well come on, bring it on, yeah. because I don't, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. It's not for me. I think that that has helped a hell of a lot. You yeah. know, it, had I been making money out of the, the whole enterprise, it probably wouldn't have gone quite mm. the way it did. So when I was discussing it with the Rangers, that's one of the things I would say to them. I say, you know, everybody here is a winner. You're getting more people in your park, yeah. getting more people in the cafe. People are healthier, happier. Yeah. Um, let's find a way. And in fact, we did find a way. We moved and the horses decided to stay on the other side until 10, 10 o'clock or whatever. Yeah. And as a result, it's worked and it's worked there forever. It's a good, because um, that's, that's not a flat I was running there no. just last night. Wimbledon Common yeah. is not flat, no. but you would be forgiven for thinking it is if all you did was a park run there. So was that a well, thing no. that you wanted it to be if flat? You, if, you run, uh, if you run that course in the winter, it gets very boggy. Yes, it does. Uh, yeah, and but it doesn't get very so hilly. It's not hilly, but it can be very tiresome. Yeah, no, I, It's no, a tough me, course. Trust me, some brand yeah. new trainers have been trashed yeah. within half a kilometre yeah. of that of that Wimbledon come and especially my children. Yeah. They used to like, almost buy them new trainers every week. You're like, yeah. oh, Wimbledon ruined them again. Yeah. But, and they used to <laughs> delight in running through the, the muddiest bits of the mud and the deepest bits of the, of the puddles. Um, but I think, was the I think, flat thing, uh, uh, did you on purpose make it, you know, because you could easily have gone down the hill. Yeah. So we, when we called the park run, ideally yeah. we were always going to run in a park and it was yeah. always going to be a wonderful, beautiful course. Yeah. Clearly... Life isn't like that. Was it always going to be sort of PB potential flat for the no, run? Well, no. Had you, had you moved on from... Well, I, personally, I wasn't particularly worried about that. Yeah. Other people were. People were. There were people who were looking for fastest, flattest and all that. Yeah. So for me, it was about the atmosphere that's um, created by these people coming together in yeah. the open space. But, I mean, if, if every park could be a single lap like this, yeah. that would be great. And to begin with, I only thought about single laps, but I very sh quickly realised that actually yeah. multiple laps are brilliant. Well, There's, with Wimbledon, because yeah. that's two laps now. Yep. That, when that was, so so when, was once you had one. a chat with the Rangers, that's how it stayed, and that's yeah. how it's, it, it always is. And the third and the fourth course, uh, I think the third one was Richmond, either Richmond or Banstead, I can't yeah. remember, but, but Banstead's a three-lapper, yeah. and it's hilly, it's in a forest, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. So I think 
the, the only rule that we had, really, rule that we had in the early days was no traffic, no possibility of a car yeah. touching the course. Um, and then slowly we had to invent rules like uh, you can't go down steps. You can go up steps, but you can't go down steps. And you shouldn't finish on a downhill and stuff like that. You know. Why is that? Oh, it's because people come flying into the finish and oh, yeah. kill themselves yeah. and everybody else. <laughs> so like a downhill yeah. ski race. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so Tom says that he first became aware of, I don't think it was Park Run by then, or was it, when he saw an advert in, in Runner's no, World. No, it was a time trial. Still the time trial when mm. he saw an advert in Runner's World. And then he was at, uh, at Leeds University and he, it, it, as part of his, he got students to put it on as a, as a, almost as a social experiment and also as a running thing. And, then it, and, that, and he got in touch with you. How did you start getting you know, involved in, was that an advert that you paid for in Runner's World? No, I've never paid, we've never paid for any kind of advertising ever. So what happened, I think in 2007, that was 2007, we went from one event to seven events over the year. Yeah. And sometime in that year, or 2008, possibly 2008, so yeah. um, the running community started to notice us. Okay. And I won an award. You know, they have the running awards. Just on the just, eve of the London yeah. Marathon, yeah. So yeah. it used to be something different, but it's yeah. the same set of awards. And I won something called Philanthropist. Or whatever, and so Park Run is like the ant and deck of those awards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who's going to who's going to accept the award this year? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it is, isn't it? Well, I, mean, I think we we declared a number of years ago that we actually don't want to be in contention, so we yeah. we don't we don't allow them to include us as yeah. part of the category. Otherwise, we just yeah. keep winning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so. They did an expose in Runner's World mm. about me and the, and the event and that sort of thing. I think that's what Tom saw. And that's, that was your, your first interview about it, was it? So they, Runner's World sent a reporter to, to come and run the, the time trial, is that right? I can't remember, to be honest. I don't think so. I think that they, we had the event and I was probably interviewed or yeah. something like that. And then, we, we, you know, I, in the early days, those first five, uh, uh, three or four years, I would write to all the local newspapers yeah. and say to them, you've got this wonderful thing on your doorstep, here are all the results, here are some photos, write about it. In fact, I even wrote the note so that they could publish it in their local newspaper. And? Well, the Richmond and Twickenham Times ignored us. Banstead, they started to produce, they did exactly the yeah. same format, they started to produce these weekly uh, celebrations of what was happening in the park. Yeah. And their event went from 30 or 40 people to 200, and it was too big for the park, so they had to stop all their marketing, all their um, yeah. the journalism stuff. So, I mean, we, we just learned that uh, a lot of journalists are pretty lazy, yeah. If you feed them everything, yeah. they'll do something with it, sometimes, and sometimes not. And then, I mean, you know, I think, I mean, we couldn't really believe it, that A, we won this award, and then B, people wanted to talk to us, and it started to get some presence in, in, um, in the public. But it was absolutely nothing like it is today. Of course, yeah. It was just absolutely very, very small, and... Not insignificant. I mean, as far as I was concerned, it was shocking that this little event that I'd created was mm. getting so much attention. But at least you were getting some sponsors on board. You, you, you could yeah. stop losing money, for goodness sake. And then, um, and then, and then, did, was Tom the first employee? No. So how did no. it, how did it work so, getting other people on board? So my first employee was a chap called Chris Wright, and he. He was from Bushy, he was working with another charity and was really suffering in his job and we are chatting. And this is when I was still um, going out and, and working every day. Uh, yeah. So 2008, nine. So it would have been seven, eight, yeah. Anyway, so I invited him to come and work with him. He, he had lots of fantastic skills and, and used them yeah. well in the, the early days of Parkrun. And, and by this time you've got sponsors on board so you can pay? No. No? No, I paid for his... You paid, uh, you paid someone's yeah. salary? Yeah. Yeah, so... so. Because you really, I mean, this was... You were all in. Oh, no. Yeah, but it, 
it didn't feel like a hardship. It just felt like this is something that uh, I think has legs. There was no evidence that it did have legs, but I, I felt that it would go the distance, mm. that it would come right in the end. Yeah. And that whatever investment I made, I would reap that back at some point. Do you feel because, because you did it for the right reasons, you're putting kind of, it's like, like it's a good thing out into the universe and like karma will repay yeah. you, is it? Yeah. I mean, do you feel it actually like that in those actual words? No, absolutely. I, I've, um, I've learned many lessons throughout my life and, uh, you know, I did a lot of horrible things when I was young and I paid a big price for that and, uh, you know, my first marriage and all that stuff. And I do think you get out what you put in. Mm. And, and so I think there is karma. And I felt that Park Run and what we were building, well, it has always been a good thing. And I do think that there's good karma that comes our way. I mean, where else do you find uh, uh, 2,000 events with God knows how many millions of people involved? Yeah, well, seven but, and counting. But, and, and the volunteers, where yeah. you have such a lot of goodwill. Yeah. And it's inherently because of what we stand for, how we, how we uh, um, behave, how we treat people, the things we say, the things we do, uh, and inherently because nobody is, nobody is getting taken for a ride. What made you so wise by, by the age of 44? <laughs> I mean, yeah. now 60, but you're, you're talking about you know, 2004 here yeah. when you're setting it up. I think it's mostly common sense. There's no... There's no um, fancy secret to to what we did. I think there are lots of clever people in this world who have a very strong desire to be important or to be powerful mm. or to be rich and those things that drive you um, many, many people are successful because of that. They, mm. They're driven. I, I've known all my life I would never be either powerful or rich and I know that I'm not that intelligent <laughs> So I just felt I've got to do something that makes me feel happy, and it's about being good. It's about yeah, no, generally being, being good, good makes you feel. Funnily yeah. enough, the, yeah. the, the more you give, the better you feel, yeah. And, yeah. and actually, it's the most selfish thing you can do is being yeah. selfless. But it takes a certain amount yeah. of wisdom to know that, and it's and, and and knowing that is one thing, but then pursuing it in this like little thing that you started, which was a tiny niche, yeah. but just keeping keeping like, like like a terrier with a bone until you got the, the what was it what was it like when you got the first sponsor on on board and you could actually kind of repay yourself a bit of the money and well, well it was embarrassing really because i didn't I, who was it was it lucas Agency? no the first bit of money we got was five thousand pounds from adidas and yeah. it was it was almost like a oh well we don't know what to do with this money so here you have it <laughs> um they were a partner with London Marathon at the time, and they did something which I think was called... Um, it was a training run thing, yeah. but they would never been able to do it. And then they saw us and thought, hang on a second, you can do these training runs, and then we can account back to London Marathon that we've done all these training runs. Yeah. So they signed a chap called Mark Sinclair, who's still around, um, is in the cycling world now, but Mark signed us up, gave us five thousand pounds, and never ever checked on us again. Mm -hmm. That was the first bit of money, and at that stage, I, I don't think I had a company. I didn't have a bank account. I was kind of running the whole thing, sort of. You didn't have a, a like formal com com no, company, or no. you didn't have a park run bank account. No, yeah. no. So I had to, because I received the money, yeah. I had to quickly set up the company, yeah. and I set up something called UKTT, UK Time Trials. Yeah. Um, and of course, at that stage, I had no idea what kind of company we should be, so I just set up any old company. Yeah. I registered the money, and then I, I had this fear of being caught out for spending money that didn't belong to me. Yeah. And as a result, I started recording everything from that point on. Yeah. Every single penny in, every single penny out. And, and the, the result was that, uh, I mean, it probably didn't... In, in fact, our timers at that time cost us a thousand pounds each. What, the, um, the, the handheld timer that we used? Yeah, and the barcodes and, and all of that. So the, the barcodes, time. I was going to Helfords and buying washers 
and I was stamping the number into the washer. So they didn't cost very much. I did that myself. I bought a tool, what do they call a die thing, and I would spend my Saturday just bashing the number into the token. And that, so that's how it was. So, but there were no barcodes yeah. for a number of years. So the early days, we yeah. spent a lot more money than we received. The second bit of sponsorship we got was from LucasAid. Mm -hmm. And I think that was, in my mind, significant. It was probably £20,000. Yeah. Then Nike it's came... A, no. It's still not a wage for you and no. someone else. Oh, no. Then the third sponsor was um, Nike, and I think that they were probably around £40,000. And, uh, you know, there were lots of requirements. We had to prove that we were doing what we were doing. We had to produce a plan. We had to show them that we were meeting the plan. We had to report back on, you know, monthly meetings. Or so. so there was a lot of stuff going on, even though we were Mickey Mouse, just yeah. one man and his dog. And, um, but our focus at that time was building the ethos of Parkrun and making sure that that ethos was protected. So, so Chris Wright and I, wrote, I, you could call it the Parkrun Bible, the, yeah. the, the methodology that we stood by and, and you know, how, we would, how we would react to certain things and, and what you could do and what you couldn't do. And one of the early things we wrote was a Parkrun charter and every single volunteer of significance would have to read that charter mm. and they'd have to agree that these are the principles we work by, which is simple things like I, I agree to be a, a, a good team member. Mm. Yeah. Because that's what you have to do. We're going yeah, to make it right, round, round, the, round tree. the tree. In fact, round the pole, you have to, so yeah, that yeah. eventually we would have a volunteer stood here. <laughs> Pesky cutting corners. People, yeah. people did. People yeah. did. Yeah. You know so, that, that left hand turning right at the end. So let's, let's just stop here. Yeah. And we'll turn the camera around and you'll see. That's the final kilometer. It's just over a kilometer, and although you can't see it, you're running uphill. Just about, yeah. So, 30 years ago, um, Hugh Jones marked a measured kilometer on this road. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, the, this is a big running community area. So there's a, there was a measure, I don't know if it's still here, but measured kilometer on this road. And when he came back to mark park run, measure park run, yeah. obviously he calibrated his bike and then he measured it up and down. So he had exactly, he knew exactly what to do with his kilometer. So this is a significant running um, place. Sonia Sullivan used to live just over there in East Molesley. She became a patron of Park Run in the early days. Mo, Mo Farrow was just over there. Mo Farrow's, yeah, yeah, just over there. And we know that... Um, the pace community, the people who look after Mo and mm. Usain Bolt, they're just over there. This is where lots of Kenyan athletes come and they train. And if you come here on a good day, you could be running with them around oh, the yeah. park. Oh, yeah. I, it's, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. So yeah. suddenly someone goes, Vroom! oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I didn't realize quite how slow I was. It's, it's interesting that... Um, they're lovely, aren't they? It's only about yeah, Conker. Even, even <laughs> age yeah. 46. You kind of want to pick them up. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting when I'm... When I'm running in the park, I've, I'm, all my life, mm. uh, running has been a social thing. Yep. So when you run and you see other people, you kind of want to have this bond, you know, we're in it together. And so I always smile. And which, you, which you don't really get in London, but you do yeah. get elsewhere. The smile of, of runner to runner recognition. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always try and do it. Yeah. Well, I frequently try and do it, but I'm frequently disappointed. I agree with you. Uh, out of every five, I'll perhaps get two acknowledgements mm. yeah. or you know if, if I can just connect with the eye yeah. that I'll that's a success yeah. but but that in in other countries Australia South Africa it's very prevalent yes, people I've people do that, yeah. and and I think that this is what I wanted for this park mm. and it has always disappointed me when I'm running in this park and I see the Kenyan athletes and they don't even greet you yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I suppose it's you know it's not a it's not a joy and it's not a social thing for them. It's, it's work. Oh, that's work. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you run as a kid? My earliest memory of running was in boarding school at the age of about seven or eight. And you know how in schools do these charity things where, I don't know, you walk a mile and you mm. collect for... 
I, it was probably one of those, and it was probably three or four kilometers, maybe even five, I don't know. But I do remember starting out walking, but finishing running. And even though it wasn't a race, I do remember finishing one of the first and thinking to myself, oh, I can do that. Yeah. I'm, yeah. You know, I, I'm a runner, you know, or I can't remember the exact word. Because one of the things I also remember is when I played football, I was absolutely useless. I, no hand-eye coordination. Yeah. And it just frustrated me that I couldn't control the ball like everybody else. So when I found I could run, it became a, a well, a self, um, a, a, it helped me build myself, yeah. that, that one of those things. So it just got better and better. And the same with swimming. I, was, I found I was quite good as a swimmer. And these are the things that I ended up doing. So yeah, so the natural thing, the most natural thing is when you move somewhere is you find the local running club, you join the local running club, and is so, that right? So I did that. Um, I ran competitively for a local club until I was 28. And yeah. then, and that was in South Africa. Then I left South Africa um, to travel the world as an IT consultant. I ended up in Belgium for a couple of years, and then I ended in the States, and I was all over, I traveled all around the world. So there was a good 10-year period where I didn't belong to a club. Mm -hmm. I was just running for myself. And I would go out probably three times a week uh, on my lunch break, and do a, a couple of days. On the weekend, I'd go and run the odd race. Yeah. There was a big period where I didn't run at all. And then I moved to, to this part of London, and... Um, for some reason decided I wanted to join a club, join Stragglers, and they were a, a, a drinking club with a running problem. Yeah, 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 the yeah. famous quote, yeah, we're yeah. not a running club with a drinking problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and one thing led to another, and I found I was competitive again, and that was the beginning of the, the return, yeah. really. So here we are on basically the, the finishing, on water finishing straight, by the way, even yeah. though, you, as you say, it's slightly out of here. I didn't even knew that. Yeah. Um, but I feel like we're on the, on, the, on, on the finishing straight of park run becoming the park run that we know. So you've got, you've got Chris involved, yep. Tom then gets involved. No, my second employee was Anita. Yep. Anita is a Francophile who, she had done some work with the Rugby World Cup in 2007 and then found herself mm. in London. And as a result, we, I met her, yeah. signed her up. Tom, interestingly, got involved uh, more on the volunteer side. So he, he, he and a chap called Paul approached me about starting Leeds Park yeah. time trial, um, and, or Leeds Hyde Park time trial. And he carried on working for the university for at least a year. But in that year, as is often the case, he started to offer more and more of his help. Mm. So when we started to engage with new events in the north of the country, Tom would go and meet with them. And, and he, didn't, he didn't earn a, a salary for at least a year. He did everything free of charge, just on his own back. And eventually, I mean, I, I'd built a really strong relationship with Tom and I started to realize his capabilities. And um, this was at the time where we had also expanded internationally. I had the IT I was looking after. I had to manage all these international territories. And, and you're full-time by this stage. You're, you're taking a salary uh, from, the, from the sponsors? I think I, I, think I was, yeah. yeah. So around 2010. And, uh, and Tom was presenting himself as A, willing, mm. and B, capable. And C, and C he, he got it. Oh, yeah. No, he totally got it. In fact, he got it more than I did for a long time. So the, where we bashed heads was where he wanted to drive some of the behavioral change that I wasn't ready for. Like? Like, um, for instance, it was Tom who said, volunteering isn't something you do to give back. I'd always seen it as giving back because that's what I did. But, well, you but, saw this whole thing as giving yeah, back, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. But the truth of it is that Tom understood that volunteers were achieving something for themselves right from the word go. By getting involved, you are elevating yourself without, with, uh, amongst your community. You're, you're, you're doing things for them, but it's 
giving you. Yeah. You say you're going away from it. Now, I knew that. Inherently, I knew it. But of course, he wanted to change something that I had created. Mm. And so there was a period of time where I had to live with the idea before it became natural to me. And it's, it's like anything, you know, I'm, I can be very uh, hard-headed. I can yep. be very determined. I can be quite dogmatic sometimes. Well, well, thank goodness, because otherwise it wouldn't be what we have now. Apart yeah, from. yeah. Well, that's what Tom says. I mean, <laughs> Tom is, is one of my biggest champions. Uh, he's always telling me things like, if it wasn't for me, there would never be a park run. Whereas... Well, that's demonstrably true. Well, I mean, if I, there are millions of people who are giving to make park run happen. But, and he says, you're right, absolutely, we couldn't do it without them. But he says, if it wasn't for you, it wouldn't have happened. We'd never have, no one had the... Yeah, and, and, and no one until now, I, I certainly didn't know just how much kind of graft it took to get it off the ground for how uh, many years it was it was really really hard and it was a very passionate piece of work mm. but it was and i had lots of fights yeah lots of fights i fought with the superintendent of this park many many times is he a good uh, guy is she a good oh uh, no he he's great i mean he's retired now but but at the time you know they want to do they wanted to change how we did stuff they wanted to make sure you know you've got to You've got to check people in, and you can only have 200, and, and we would fight. Which I suppose fair enough. You know, of course, from their influx. point of view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From How the... do they feel about it now? Oh, they love it. So what's happened is they've changed the course, so we no longer run down Chestnut Avenue. These are 400-year-old chestnut trees, and they're very, very important. And you'll see some of them are dying, some of them are falling down. And they were suggesting that path, uh, which is the path that kind of we created many years ago really many i've years always ago. wondered how many yeah. feet to go down a path to create a yeah. path and it turns out 16 years of park run yeah. will do it <laughs> well they suggest that um that it wasn't good for the trees that we yeah. were stomping up and down yeah. this part i you know i i think it's immaterial the fact is they it's their job to look after the park yeah their rules are important mm. uh, they said to us can you move the course of course we move the course yeah and now we're best buddies great great isn't, isn't that how it is no well that's great and, and 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 you know you'll struggle i guess to find a park in the land in the world in the park run world that doesn't want you know a bit of what park run offers for their local well I, I would like to believe that to be true i mean i know um there was something on the news just this morning about um a cycle race that's had to change at the very, very last minute just because of the new measures that were introduced in lockdown. So, and there are lots of parks who have said uh, they don't want us back until this is resolved. Not everybody has the same level of information about what this terrible disease does and, and how uh, the fact that we're not in the parks, how that's affecting people's minds and, and so on. So, How's it affecting you? Well, I'm okay. Remember, I am still very active. Yeah. Um, I've got a tremendously supportive family. I've got lots of good things going in my life. I've got this. I've got Park Run. And Park Run, even though we're not running, it continues. Um, so I'm in a good place. I mean, I, you know, the whole pandemic is troublesome. Mm -hmm. It does bother me. It bothers me what the potential outcome could be if this doesn't fix itself or doesn't get fixed in the next few months i think that I, it worries me but yeah no i think i'm i'm good but i don't think everybody is i think there are a lot of people who traditionally would be here on a saturday morning who probably haven't done any running at all or any exercise some people who haven't even left their houses yeah 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 and that is that is the worry and that is what i don't you know i was speaking to chrissy about this on the podcast a few weeks ago but you know that that when she and she, I think she and Tom did the bulk of the interviews that that um, that September morning when it was announced that Park Run could return, all being well, yeah. um, in October, which obviously can't happen at the moment, um, she was frequently asked, well, "Why don't you just go out and run?" Mm. And that's you know that's that's <laughs> that's missing the point by quite mm. a margin. 
Well, the point is, some of us can do yes, that. Exactly. Some of us have those capabilities. But Parkrun speaks to a lot of people who find it incredibly intimidating to leave their front door. Uh, very, very difficult to go running without the masses looking after you. I mean, you know, everybody, different body shapes and so on. It's intimidating. Yeah, absolutely. And so what this does is it allows a little bit of an anon anon anonymous... Anonymity, yeah. yeah anonymity. <laughs> it allows people to come and be and to enjoy yeah. without being exposed for any one particular reason or another. What about COVID aside, what do you hope for and what do you fear for in the future for Parkrun? So I've... I've <sighs> I've never really uh, hoped for anything other than that park run would be understood by local communities and that yeah. they would grab it with both hands, just like you would a, a local um, play park for your children. You know, it's a, it's a facility there for communities to come together and to get a little bit healthier have a, a lot of fun, and then something that you can reference that, that brings, brings it all together. So my, con my ongoing hope is that Parkrun will continue to do that, and that the benefits of that, which are things like our mental health and well-being, the programs that we do with the prisons, the yeah. stuff that's going on with doctors as uh, prescribing, that that will just continue. So these are things I never ever dreamed of yeah. that the clever people involved in Parkrun have brought to bear. And the benefits are, you know, they're massive, absolutely massive. Well, of course, so, I'm, of course. so I'm hoping that yeah. that's going to continue. My fear... For more and more people, obviously. For more and more people. Mm. Although we're not aggressive about growth, mm. um, it's not like we have to conquer the world and we need to go to every single place. Things need to be right before we go there. Um, and we have to protect what we've got before expansion. Yeah. So we need to make sure that wherever we have a park run, that it is sustainable and that... So, you know, that's a challenge. That, that has always been a challenge and will continue to be a challenge for us. My fear is that all of this is for nothing, that something like COVID comes along and it changes life for everyone in so many different ways, never be the same again. Things like going to a restaurant. I mean, if, if restaurants get closed and they can't afford to keep going, obviously taxpayer can't keep bailing them out, they'll disappear. Yeah. And then it's so much harder for them to start again. It, you know, you'll find that there are only restaurants for really wealthy people, not for the average person. And so stuff could change. Now, I, you're going to trip. Well, um, well noticed. Uh, I, I think that that's doomsday scenario, and it's probably never going to happen. Mm. But at the same time, that, of course, that's my fear. My fear is that Park Run will disappear into, I don't know. I think, I think, I think it's safe to say that A, pretty good hands oh know, yeah the, the team are very good um and b there are many many hundreds of thousands if not millions of people who believe in it and love it so much that they just they won't let that happen because it's i think i think that the the genius of it and, and i didn't realize actually how much of it wasn't accidental even though you like to say oh it only just happened it didn't the genius of it is that from 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 its inception it wasn't about the run it was about the community Absolutely. I, you know, that was really for my benefit. I, I felt quite selfish about it, but actually I didn't realize other yeah. people were getting the same benefit. Yeah. The community aspect is really, really important. And it's great to see people yeah. being active. We'll stop at this tree. Okay, are we, are we, nearly, are we on the home straight here this or have it. we finished? This is, is, this, it. is this the finishing? So, did you have a funnel or where, how, did you, how did you finish? Uh, in the early days, there was no tape or anything. It was just individuals came across so slowly that you could hand out the tape and then they just walk yeah. off. So where was, I mean, was it this tree? Was it that stump? Actually, this is the important tree, but um, it was, these two have been lost since we started Parkrun, these two trees. Actually, they would run around these trees and we'd finish next to that little well, lake to, to begin. Okay, that's... 
we got to, we'll, we'll go. We'll go to, to the we very, can, very first. We don't. We don't want to. We, we don't want to do the whole course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want to be short. So the very, very first finish area was yeah. was next to that um, little canal thing. So there's a tree anywhere, anywhere around this tree. You had to go around the tree. You had to go around this uh, yeah. tree, and then around that one. Around. This one here. This one. Yeah. But almost like tripping over into the road. Yeah, this is the first part, so yeah. yeah. I remember the very first event, the first two runners came in together yeah. and they went round there, they were racing each other. Yeah. They went round that one together and then they raced around here. So yeah, we had to go around here. I had to duck your head, I think that was, I had to tell people there, yeah. Yeah, duck your head under the trees. This branch wasn't here, but they'd come down here, and the fourth tree, one. Careful of the, was this always here? Is this, this, is always, this has always been here, it didn't always look this, this bad, but it was here. So. country this finish. Yeah. I mean, because we've been on paths most of the time, but here we go, yeah. this, isn't, this isn't short. No, listen. So, at this tree was the, the formal finish, and I would, I would stand, I think I would stand here with the timer, and then Joe or someone would hand the token. So they'd cross the line, probably stop there, yeah. and then walk across back to well, where my car, there. no, that bridge didn't exist. Okay. So they walk back against the course to my car. So that was one of the first problems. As we got busy, we realized actually this is a bit limited, but also the first finishers were walking against the other runners yeah. and crossing from them, going to my car. And I, I can't remember how that first course changed, but, but what happened was that we turned it on its head and that became the start line and they ran that way around, all the way around the park, in, in the reverse, and finished up at the tree over Which there. Which is sort of what Patrick's done today. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's done it all back. So we've, we've done it in both front and back. Paul, this has been such a treat. Oh, Thank man. you. It's, this, has been, this has been really lovely, and I just hope that, you know, for the 17th birthday, I will see you in this park, but it won't be a, what is it, Wednesday afternoon. It'll be a Saturday morning. Yeah. And there'll be like 2,000 people over there be ready to give awards away and run and celebrate. Because actually, the birthday in this park, when did that start becoming a real thing? It was always uh, right from the word go. So, yeah. I mean, obviously, in the early days, it was just a little birthday. So, so what we did was, and it hasn't really changed, we invited people to bring and share. Yeah. which is part of the community, mm. the whole thing. Mm. So people just started bringing cakes and champagne and orange juice and stuff, and we'd share it out. And then that became a weekly thing. So people would find an excuse to bring and share. And I mean, there's been many years where there have been probably three or four weeks in a year where there hasn't been champagne at this park. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I... It's not a lot, you have a tiny little bit yeah, like yeah. that, but, but there's always something to celebrate. Somebody's got their 50th, they've got their 100th, they've yeah. 25 volunteer, uh, someone's got their own natural birthday, it's Halloween, it's whatever it is. There's yeah. always a reason. And I think that's the same really across a lot of parks. There is something magical. Yeah. I mean, I know that people kind of flock here as like the park run mecca and they, you know, they, they love especially doing it on the birthday, but there is something really special i mean especially back doing the actual the original yeah. course talking it through with this has been great well Thank for you. me it's been really interesting because i probably haven't done this course the one that we've just done today i haven't done that for maybe 12 years or so it's a long time yeah. well listen here's to 2021 yeah and uh, and and here's the part one returning all over the world yeah. as soon as possible fingers crossed i can't wait i i you know i feel very very uh hot saw mm. about all the events and all the people who are desperate for us to come back and we're finding it difficult yeah. to, find, you know, to, to get things in place to, to make that how, happen. How much so. of your working day generally does Parkrun take up now? None. 
Well, it's not none, is it? Because you get wheeled out loads and you no, have to it's, do... No, it's, you... it's practically nothing. So, I mean, as you said, we've got an incredible team and they're very self-sufficient. They don't need me for anything anymore, apart from promotional stuff. Um, I, I, uh, I sit on the COVID call every single week to find out what's going on and what we're doing and what we're not doing and that sort of thing. I'm in board meetings and all that. So I'm not not involved. But the team don't have to ask me anything anymore. And they haven't done for a long time. They don't, they don't need to check stuff with me anymore. Um, two more things. First of all, I think we should both applaud Patrick Thank for you, Patrick. walking that whole thing backwards. That's awesome. Um, and second of all, just, uh, you know, just any message that you have to any kind of any frustrated park runner watching who thinks, God, you know, I'm, I might be struggling. Yeah. To... Well, I'd, you know, I'd say to them, my heart goes out to you. I feel your pain. Um, I often struggle with the thought of us not coming back. But then there are so many people out there who tell me that's just not, it's impossible, it's going to come back. Evasos, you just said it to me. So I would encourage you to be positive. Try and connect with someone in parkrun world, even if it's just virtually, uh, because that is a great help. There are so many people who are interested in helping you. And when you can and you feel comfortable, get out and go for a walk like we've done today because that's the first step towards getting back to being a, a runner in the parks. And then, you know, I just want to thank every single volunteer who's been sitting on their hands waiting for us to come back. I want to thank you for what you've done over the years, but also what you're going to do in the next few years is going to be doubly important. And then finally, just everybody who works for Park Run, you're all incredible. And uh, you make me very happy. Thank you very much. So awesome. But we nearly teared up at the end there. Oh, we, no. we, we always <laughs> end.